The Devil Wears Prada. It is about a woman who is the editor-in-chief of a magazine called Runway. Runway being the fictional equivalent of Vogue. Vogue magazine is the high fashion magazine, the big one in the world. Okay, it is where uh, fashion uh, is the thing. And Miranda is one of those people that has sacrificed a lot for her job. And there's, at one point, she basically tells uh, Andrea, her uh, erstwhile assistant, who is the stories told through her eyes, that no one can do what I do. Okay, it is a woman in a world, well, I really don't think running a fashion magazine would be a guy's world, but it's a tough job. Hey, Dave. And Miranda demands excellence. She works harder than anybody. Uh, when you see and Andrea, Andy, show up at the house with the book, which is a layout of the magazine that is going to be published like in a few months. And Miranda looks at that thing religiously every night, all night long, puts notes in it, brings it back, gives it back to her assistant, either Andy or the other one, and they take it to the other, the worker ants. Miranda is very exacting. She expects everybody around her to be excellent. She doesn't like answering questions because she believes you should know the answers. Please bore me with some, please bore someone else with, with your questions. I mean, the, the, one of my favorite lines. I worked for somebody like that and it was hard. I was not, I was not good at that. Um, but the thing about Miranda is she makes everybody better around her. They're afraid of her, they respect her. You've got Stanley Tucci as Nigel. Nigel respects her, they're friends, they're colleagues. Okay, but when you know, you, you really wonder how close a friend Miranda would actually have with anybody. Uh, Miranda is unable to balance a home life and a, a married life with her job because she sacrifices her kids, her marriages to her work. Okay, when I think of a woman in a position of power in that position, I think of someone like her. And when I talk about, I want you to be excellent because I work for excellence, so I want you to do the same thing. That is something guys do. Vince Lombardi told his teams, you will never reach perfection, but you can reach excellence. That there's nothing different between Miranda Priestley saying that and Lombardi. All right, so Doomcock, if you haven't seen the video, Dave, if you want to put a link to Doomy's video in, this, in the uh, chat, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, when you see Doom, Doomcock's video, you're going to find out that Susan Arnold went in to her first meeting with all the heads of all the divisions of Disney and read them the Riot Act. And at one point was standing in front of a large screen TV with tweets, nasty tweets about the fans going past her. Now, I'm not well versed in Marvel or Pixar, but I do know that Lucasfilm has a, a, a cadre, a plethora of jackasses who did that. Pablo Hidalgo being number one, okay? And it's unfortunate for him right now because it looks to me like within the next few months, a lot of those people, even if they've reformed, are gonna be gone. And simply the reason is this. Susan Arnold looked around, saw who was causing trouble, realizing and, and looked how the fans reacted to them, realizing they did that to themselves they, meaning the people working for Disney, that they were basically going against the company and at, 
one time, and you guys saw it, uh, Pablo got his hands bitch slapped in, in June of 2018, sat there crying in his cornflakes over it, went and redid his Twitter account, you know, something HVAC solutions, uh, basically, I'm just a poor little dweeb. I don't know why they're picking on me. You know, it was one of the tweets. I didn't say that one and I should have. Um, and basically, you know, a billionaire should be dis disappeared and mulched. Okay. He is, thank you, Dave. He is basically the poster child of all this, at least for Lucasfilm. Okay. His last most egregious offense and they could sit there and say he was trying to uh, defend um, Star Wars theory, but how do you defend emotions shouldn't, emotions aren't for public, aren't to be shared or something like that? Let me ask you a question. How do you rationalize that was actually defending Star Wars theory? You know, and I know, it wasn't. He was mocking him, and he was mocking the fans. Susan Arnold basically going, this company has been attacking fans with all these tweets behind her. What is wrong with, are you crazy? If you, uh, if anybody honestly thinks that these people are gonna be are gonna get let go, get away with all this shit. They're not, because personnel is policy. Trust me, that woman has heard that that before. Okay, you don't get to where she got without hearing that. Okay, and she knows who the bad eggs are. So does JPEG. JPEG's memo was very revealing with that. That seemed like a happy-go-lucky memo, but it wasn't. People in Disney told Cam at that work at Disney told Cameron Pasha, it went off like a nuclear bomb. And now sh the boss, the big one, Puppet Master, is going, I'm coming after your job. And the reason why even people who seem like they've been uh, penitent, emotions aren't for sharing, yeah. And then I'm told by somebody that he really didn't mean it that way. He was defending Star Wars theory. It's like, do I look stupid to you? Do you think I fell off the turnip truck? My dog wouldn't believe that. All right. That is the dumbest thing I have ever heard in my entire life. There's no way you can look at emotions aren't for sharing and think he was actually defending Star Wars theory. That was mocking Star Wars theory, mocking you guys who cried, mocking me who cheered. Okay, that's what that was. Pablo was furious, and it would be wonderful, wonderful to actually see what his private account was saying beyond that. His job is in jeopardy and has been for some time, and I think he knows it. Okay, they don't want him there anymore. Again. Personal is policy. If you have Pablo Hidalgo there, who has been, you know, gotten into actual public fights with the black pill YouTubers, all right, I've gotten in fights with them too, but I'm not a black pill. He's gotten into public fights with them. Th those, and I know those tweets were saved. Do you honestly don't, you honestly don't think somebody uh, that people haven't gone through Ichibaka's tweets, uh, collection of tweets from Disney. They know about that blog. They probably have it on file in Chapek and in Arnold's office. Okay, personal is policy. Pablo Hidalgo is one of the reasons why Disney Plus isn't doing well. Okay, he really is. I don't want to watch, I don't want to watch being Lauren. I don't want to watch uh, Book of Boba Fett, even if people say it's good. Take away Pablo.
Well, I want, I don't care about them as much as I want to see Hidalgo go. Okay, because a lot of the black pill, big YouTubers will have to shut their mouths or find something else to bitch about. Uh, they, 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 they won't have something to, to, to go after, okay? You take away their fangs. You defang them. Um, you know, the Acolyte is not going to go forward. In fact, I, I, I looked at the IMDb Pro of it. The, d the designer, the guy who, who's supposed to do production design, he's not listed anymore. Now, maybe if I go back, he will be. Um, but there's only one other person listed, and that girl, there's a voice actress listed. And that girl, who's supposed to be the, the lead act, the lead, she's not listed anymore. And Leslie Headland has about 80,000 different projects on top of it. This isn't going anywhere. Okay, this is not going anywhere. And I'm laughing hysterically because um, it, 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 it's not. So you've got Susan Arnold saying this. Get ready, okay? Because I believe strongly now that uh, this time next year, Lucasfilm is going to be completely different. Completely. Okay. But again, the first thing you do is get rid of the bad apples. Pablo, his wife. Andy Gutierrez is already gone. The, the guy who actually had that red X Luke on his cubicle, he's been gone for, for a long time. He was replaced by a girl who wanted to attack the fans. He wanted to gather info about how bad the fandom is. And she's gone. Okay, Disney replaced the PR person with one of their own, okay, who probably answers to Bob Chapek and Alan Bergman, okay. It is all obvious now. And like Miranda Priestly, when Arnold supposedly said, are you all crazy? And I remember Miranda saying that to Andy in The Devil Wears Prada, um, there's a hint of, we are going to go for excellence here. We are going to be a for-profit company that caters to our fans and customers, okay? I mean, Bob J. Pick himself said, too many in this company have gone against the company. And what he meant was, you're attacking the fans, which hurts the company, so you're going against the company. He could have said Pablo Hidalgo right there. Okay. Um, in, in that bio, the HVAC Solutions uh, bio, it said, you know, all tweets from now on are something at uh, the discretion of the mother company whom you, shall be really, whom you should be really mad at and yell at. And like, I'm paraphrasing, but that's what it said. I'm like, so he's, he's, he's basically in that going after Disney. And that was when Bob Iger was there. So if he was upset with Bob Iger, how, how, man, how bad is it going to be with Bob Chapek? Chapek is not going to tolerate that shit. He doesn't have to. He can look at, at, you know, Kathy Kennedy and go, what is going on with this guy? Why has he been kept on so long? Okay? I mean... You know, I the, all right, on the Instagram, that guy trying to rationalize that, hey, John, that um, uh, the emotions aren't for sharing was really defending Star Wars theory. I'm like, again, do I look stupid? I think that was Pablo. Look, that guy started in tech, in technology at Lucasfilm, okay? He started with tech in technology, okay? So the idea that he wouldn't have accounts all over the place that he could access anytime he wanted to harass, bother, and bully people doesn't surprise me. That guy that was stalking me all over Twitter, Daily Plunge, 
Mazarus discovered that that Twitter, Twitter account turned into a pop, the Pablo Hidalgo account that's talk that, that, that he's using as a public account. Okay. And I, I got to get back on, on Twitter. I am going to use that picture he had. And I'm going to call my account something that would make him recognize it right away. Okay. I know that was him now. I know that was him. All right. So the idea that he has gotten away with it so long is ridiculous. The idea that uh, he, he, has, he has championed projects. Hey, Jonathan, he has championed projects that have not gone anywhere. The High Republic? I'm sure Susan Arnold's going, how much money do they spend on this? How much money is it going to cost to keep it up? This is the thing. Money is everything. Now, you could be Pablo and cry about, you know, billionaires and should be mulched and all the rest of that shit. But really, it's like, no. You, Mr. Hidalgo, should just do your fucking job. Okay? Again, and I would caution anybody, if they're working for a company like Disney, to get off Twitter. I would have told... Gina, get off Twitter. Stop talking on Twitter. I know you, you've made f friends there, whatever that means, but it's not helping you. Oh, yeah, I would love that. I mean, they could come in, you know, anytime they wanted. I would love. I have come, after watching a few of John's other movies, have come to absolutely adore him. I think he's a wonderful filmmaker I think he's I mean he's one of us and he's such a good dude you know um you can tell that people that are big stars Robert Downey Jr. Scarlett Johansson absolutely worship him okay because he knows what the customers wants he brings joy to the projects and no bullshit Okay, um, and as far as like bankable directors and producers, I would put him up against J.J. Abrams any day of the week and I would win. Okay, he's that good. And Dave Filoni, he's, you know, the the other son of George, George and Marshall Lucas. Okay, that's, that's who he is, who he is. And I know a lot of people like to rag him. They don't like uh, some of the stuff he's added. But you know what? When they were doing Clone Wars, George had the last laugh on that. Okay? And on everything. And he had the last laugh on the EU. Okay? And I can't help you. All right? I mean, there was a letter. Well, I don't want to talk about that. Um, but, yeah. So they can stop in any time. We'll open up a bottle of uh, Cristal for them. Okay, and bring out uh, some high class uh, fine dining. Okay, we'll figure it out. Um, I'd love that. I, I just, they, they're fixing what's broken. Okay, and they're moving at, at the speed of light in a vacuum. Okay, that, which is Millennium Falcon fast. Okay, it's, it's happening. And don't be surprised if you see things coming public. Layoffs, names. Arnold, I don't think, is afraid to lay it all bare because I think they have to. I think they know it. Um, I myself, with my secret squirrel email to Mr. Chapek, said you've got to do it. You've got to do it. And not just to help Disney out, but also to put the naysayers in a place. This, See, this goes both ways. You, uh, everybody here? We're caught in the middle, okay? We just want a good Star Wars. We want to see... Yeah, that's what I mean. Um, she's Miranda Priestly. That picture in my thumbnail, that's looking over your desk going, are you crazy? 
You know, I mean, I can't imagine. I mean, but, but this sounds like when she was yelling at these guys and she had a TV behind her with tweets going by, Disney employees attacking fans. How many of those do you think came from Lucasfilm? Okay, because I really don't remember a lot coming from Marvel. From the comics division, yeah. But not much from Marvel. I see Brie Larson stuff up there. I see a lot from there. But I don't really see a lot from Marvel. But I would see a lot from Lucasfilm. Okay, and again, if I could, if I have tweets saved from 2018 from Pablo and from earlier, Disney does. I told him once, you know, you ought to watch who you're talking to on Twitter. You might be surprised at who they are. And he started mocking me. You know how easy it would be to fuck with him if you're Susan Arnold? You get your assistant to create a, a dummy account. Okay? You, you do that a couple years before all this happened. And you start collecting data. You start putting things, I mean, these people are that stupid. They actually thought for the longest time that they couldn't be touched. Okay, Joker voice, that they could not be knight, that they could not earn the wrath of God. Oh, look, here's the deal. A lot of those are park people and they know better but they want everything fixed now. Um, we're not dealing, all right, here's the deal, the YouTube community, I love a lot of these people, but a lot of them just don't think. They don't think. Like, Polly at Latino Slant had uh, Tom Conkle on talking about the latest great episode of Boba Fett. And it was fan, a fantastic discussion. And it wasn't, stick a fork in it or something like that you know it was it was good here's why it was good and we talked about the images it was they, they oh yeah i think so too jen they talked about the lore that was coming out they talked about little indications the music at the end mandalorian theme you they talked a lot about that this is the kind of elevated conversation we should be having. Not the I hate it because. Have you seen it? Well, I only saw two episodes. Oh, fuck. And then just shitting all over it. Without a brain. You know, I, you know, are these the kind of, you know, they want, what do you want? Mindless action? That's all you want? Go play a video game. Okay, just go do it. Let, let us watch and appreciate this. You haven't read the EU? Here's a, a video by Loremaster or Eckhart's Ladder about, about, the book, about Boba Fett. You don't have any time to watch it? You're basically getting a lot of the stuff that is in the EU and in other sources, not the Pablo Hidalgo bullshit, in the show. And they're so illiterate on the franchise, they don't see it. Okay, that's the problem with these fans. Now, there are ways to fix this. Here's number one, and I think Susan Arnold may be doing this. You bring out what's going on with Kathy Kennedy out there. She is resigning in a year. You can all break out your champagne. She's done. St Lucasfilm is in the hands of whoever, John Favreau or whatever. They're running it now, okay? These people have been fired. They're no longer welcome in, at Lucasfilm, they're gone. <coughs> okay, High Republic is canceled. We're not doing this anymore. Acolyte is canceled. We're not doing that anymore. And then to throw the, the uh, Gina Carano worshippers a bone 
We've reached out to Gina Carano. We've asked her to come back. Ball's in her court. Now, the worshipers will say, well, you treated her so bad, why would you want to come back? <sighs> Here's the deal. You got what you got what you wanted. Yeah, I, I agree. John 42, I agree with that. I, I, I think that um, you you defang the whiners and that bunch by going public with this. So they have to talk about the changes at Disney. So they have to admit this is going on. So they have to look stupid. Dim cack dry, Cameron dry, nah, 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 stuff is blah, blah, you know. Now they can't say anything. Now they can't say anything. And trolls like Matt Jarbo can't say anything. All right. Now they have, they have to have that come to Jesus moment. We lost the one thing that gave us power. The negative shit coming out of Kennedy's office. It's no longer there. Okay. Now. You know, they'll turn their, you know, their 400,000 subscriber channels on on John Favreau on blast. But that's a different kettle of fish. Because a lot of people really like John Favreau. Okay. He does not say anything politically. He does not attack the fans. He's a storyteller. He's done a pretty damn good job. And, you know, <clears throat> a lot of people... We'll drift away from them. See, in my opinion, it's not so much as how many subscribers you have, it's how many views you get, okay? And you have, a, you know, a, a couple hundred thousand Well, in some ways, yeah. Oh, JS, in some ways, yeah, but you know, I don't know anymore. Um, it, when she's standing there, oh, no problem, Latino Slant. Loved, loved, loved that conversation with you and, and Tom. I absolutely adore Tom. It's, it's, it's such a better conversation to have than the constant negativity. I am so sick of, you know, you can like an episode or not like an episode, but if you haven't seen it and you still hate it, Without seeing it, I can't talk to you. Okay. At least say you saw it. You know what I'm saying? And don't say you saw two episodes. You saw the whole thing. Okay. Um, I am so sick of, of that particular group of people having power over the narrative. In my opinion, after watching Doomcock's latest, is... Susan Arnold may do what I think she should do and go public with this and say, Art Bunker, hey, uh, long time no see, dude. Um, he may, she may put a lot of this stuff in public on blast. I don't think subordinates like, like Pablo Hidalgo, who have, and just by being on Twitter, have made Disney and Lucasfilm look stupid and bad to the fans for so long deserve private anything. They were in public nasty to the fans, bullied the fans, went on podcasts without talking to PR about it. And it's like, you know, you went against the company, okay? All right, you made bad decisions. You know, when Kennedy said, we don't have 800 page novels and comics to, to use as a base. I'm sure John Favreau went, oh fuck. You know, I'm sure, you know, Dave Filoni went, what is she talking about? You know, where did she get that? She, is she lying? She probably is. Or she's so stupid she didn't know the EU existed. Okay, she didn't realize how many novels there were and how big the lore was. That there were hundreds of reference books. Okay. Or she lied about it and gave Pablo the, the, uh, 
the, the chance to do what he wanted to do, which is kill the EU. And then we get drunk, deadbeat, dad Han Solo, uh, suicidal Luke Skywalker, and Leia Poppins. And then they wonder why people are like, you know, it is not going to happen like that anymore. That guy, I don't care if he's a freaking janitor, still represented Lucasfilm and Disney on Twitter and everywhere else his little fat face showed up, okay? He hurt the cause by being a loud mouth, by attacking the fans and going against the company. Time and time and time again, okay? Emotions aren't for sharing. And we're all supposed to believe he was really defending uh, Star Wars theory. No, you weren't. I'm not stupid. It involved the turnip truck yesterday. That there's no way you can... You'd have to be... I mean, my dog wouldn't know if that wasn't a, a defense of Star Wars theory. Okay? And he said it in private. He didn't say it on his public chat. He said it in private. Okay? And then he had to go and apologize. Which I'm sure he said, no... I was really defending you. Can I call you? And Star Wars there is like, bite me. Bite me, bro. You know, that guy was really upset about that. Okay? You don't do that. Look, again, I don't care if you're a janitor. If you work for Disney, if you work for Lucasfilm, you represent the company and personnel is policy. Okay? So if that guy, Pablo Hidalgo, and the other little minions get fired publicly by Lucasfilm, Disney through Lucasfilm soon. A, you get rid of that, you, you get rid of that waste, okay? You tell the, you tell the fan, and that's telling fans who've been insulted over and over again by these people for almost a decade, where we heard you, we're listening, we're taking care of this. B, you defang the big channels. They have to talk about the good you're doing now. If they want to even talk about anything. Do I think he'll be fired first? Um, I don't even know if he's there right now. Okay. I had to dig to find out that Andy, Good Andy Gutierrez left or was fired uh, a year ago. January, okay, this January, like right around this time, and she's working for somebody else now. Um, you know, she's not working, you know, that Star Wars show is on hiatus. They'll never make it again, not with that team. She's no longer going to be at Lucasfilm. She's just not. Not after fanboy tears mugs and red and not being aware enough to tell the dweeb in the cubicle. Get that picture of Luke Skywalker off, off of this now. If I'm filming and the fans see it, they're gonna come, they're gonna assault me, which is exactly what happened. But she's supposed to be PR. You would think she would know that. And she didn't. It never occurred to her that the fans would be upset seeing that after TLJ. You know, so maybe, but I think it's got to be public. That's a nice way to think about it. But here's a question. Ola Polly, would it be better to be public about that? So the fans know these people can no longer harass you, they're no longer part of Lucasfilm? Or do you do it secretly? So you have people like, and still saying, Kennedy, stop there. She's not leaving. And all the rest of that stupid shit they say. Bye. Do you? Again, you defang those channels by making this public. And then they have to talk about it then they have to change their tune, okay? 
a lot of people made a lot of money on this crap that are, are supposed to be on our side. And I think, in my opinion, they're terrified of what's going to come of their channels once Kennedy and her flying monkeys are gone. Okay? I want to talk about good Star Wars. Okay? I don't want to talk about this. But there are too many people out there that just want to talk about how bad everything is. Okay? Great conversation on, on Polly's channel today. All right? Great conversation. It was elevated. You actually felt like you were having a conversation that had some brain power to it. Not, it all sucks. Which, and then everybody else is parroting in a circle jerk. Okay? Well, you know, it, it, it's just, it's got to go that way because the black pills have created a narrative and I think Susan Arnold, oh, it's, she, do you guys remember me saying I would be showing the tweets of people who are attacking the fans if I was running Disney or Lucasfilm? She did that. She stood in front of a TV with the tweets rolling by. Now again, anybody at Marvel ever do that? Do that to the extent that Lucas filmed it? No. That was mostly probably Lucas film, and other you know other other Disney employees, and it's it's going to be real ugly because if she did that, guys. If I was Pablo, I'd be updating my resume. I would, I would have done it weeks ago. He knew she was coming in. You know, they all thought because she's a lesbian that she'd be on their side. And it's like, no, no, not really. Uh, she is from the Carlisle group. Very serious guys. Professional law-abiding gangsters, to be honest. And they want their money. Yeah, they were. I mean, John 42 is right. And it was... The fact that she did that, and I believe she did. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Just tells me that they've been aware of this bullshit for a long time. Probably since before... TLJ came out because I got into it with Pablo one day. I've seen him do racist stuff, Abu Nas, at Abu Nas, him and Freddie Prince Jr., who is probably coked up out of his ass. Um, and in 2017, before TLJ came out, I saw him go off on a friend of mine. And it was the first time I'd ever been aware of him and I really wasn't um, aware of Hidalgo's infamy amongst the fan groups. But the moment I saw what he did to my friend, he was a 20 year old kid at the time, I was like, you asshole. And I was like, okay, fine, okay, fine. Now I'm done. This guy's gotta go, okay? What is done in my name reflects upon me. Remember that line from the Patriot? Pablo and those other idiots are representing Lucasfilm. They would never have done it when George was there. George would have fired him. He understands personnel is policy. Whoever you have in the, in the face of the public is who the Republic thinks is your company. Not that difficult, okay, to figure out. You've got a bunch of sordid, angry, left-wing dipshits running around who don't 
understand how money's made. It's like this stuff that falls from the sky like snow. They don't have to earn it or anything. They don't have to produce anything. They bitch about millionaires and think they should be disappeared or mulched. Um, you know, they've got, you know, racist slogans on their bios, Black Lives Matters. And I'm sure if you said, what about, I mean, Paulo Hidalgo's Latino, what about your life? Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, uh, Polly. That was a great conversation. It really, really was. It made me, it makes me feel better. I think when the noise dies down, when all this goes away, I think it'd be really nice to have a cadre of channels that have a con intellectual conversation about this stuff without the negative, the negativity. You know what I'm saying? Um, because I, again, too many people with, with that influence the, the masses on YouTube have fashioned a narrative about the book of Boba Fett and, and what John Favreau and Dave Filoni are doing that isn't true, okay? That isn't true. They're being intellectually dishonest about it, all right? Um, but back to what I was saying, this stuff has been going on for a long time. And like John 42 said, I know we, that there had to be people keeping notes and collecting tweets, you know, and if she did that, she's going after the people at Lucasfilm that did that. Because again, find me where a director, well, except for James Gunn, but find me at where Robert Downey Jr. or um, somebody who wrote uh, one of the, uh, uh, you know, anybody who is working on, on uh, Avengers, Endgame, or whatever, in, in, in a position of power that worked inside Marvel Studios was doing that shit to the extent that Lucasfilm was. Okay, now granted, probably Marvel's going to be fixed too. Um, you know, I think Kevin Feige won't be renewed or he'll resign. I think uh, Kennedy's already gone. And but if they t if, but they have yet to make it public, and Disney's gonna get have to get off its ass with that. Have a come to Jesus moment. Tell the investors, we are telling the fans what we're doing because the fans are demanding to know. And the way we get them back to trust us again is to show them these people that have caused so much consternation in the fandom are gone. All right. Kennedy resigning. Various sundry uh, Twitter bullies and bullies in general on the internet at Lucasfilm are gone. They were, they've been forced out. We are restructuring. There is no more story group. All creative decisions go through Dave Filoni's office now. All right. Um, we have heard you. That would take, that would give the fans a lot of hope. And it would also shut the it would it would it would you take away a talking point can I tell you those channels that were that, that John is mentioning made a lot of money off of TLJ8 rightfully so rightfully so but they won't let it go now okay and those channels got to keep up that narrative because they want that money, all right? They're terrified that this is gonna end, all right? I mean, I'm sorry, but, you know, the conversation can change now. Um.
Oh, I know, I know, and I can't. You know, and I'll, I'll tell you something. I'm talking about a mutual, mutually beneficial relationship between us, John Favreau, Dave Filoni, and Lucasfilm, and Disney, okay? We support them when they make good stuff. They make good stuff, we support them. It's a symbiotic relationship. They don't exist without us, and we don't exist really as a fan base without them, okay? Star Wars needs to be an escape from the bullshit. And if I can't go to a YouTube channel and talk about how much I like The Mandalorian, The, Mandalorian, the Book of Boba Fett, Rogue One, or whatever, because there's too many people hating on it because of various reasons, that takes away my joy. Okay, it also makes me question the fan, the fandom. You know, are you really a Star Wars fan? You hate it so much, you haven't seen one episode of Boba Fett. And again, I look at these big channels and I say, if you guys actually shut your mouths and all sat down to watch it, whatever, you, you probably have a different opinion. You know, I one guy today was saying in a chat, or on a panel, he just got so bored, episode four, he fell asleep. What the fuck? You're not a Star Wars fan. You're not. You're not. I mean, again, they think Boba Fett is some sort of killing machine. He, he wasn't in the EU after the Sarlacc. He was damaged goods for his whole life after that. But they don't know this. You know, their Boba Fett got basically offed by a blind guy with a gaffy stick. Okay, wow, what a badass. Now, in Mandalorian, was it episode 13 when he got his armor back? He was a badass. That was awesome. That was, yeah, that was what you expected of that character. This is the story of how he got out of the Sarlacc, how he survived, and how he changed. It's a, it's a story of rebirth. And we're de dealing with a bunch of intellectual dimwits, okay? You know, I don't know what the, it's like, read the books. Watch the story about the, the stories about the lore. Find out what you're, so you have something to look at, okay? All right, and don't put people down who like it. And don't sit there and cheer that it lost half its viewership. Because I'm gonna tell you something, there could be a world someday without Star Wars for us to look forward to, for our kids to look forward to. Do you really want that? And don't sit there and tell me Star Wars is dead. It's not. But there are a lot of people out there who are trying to kill it for, and I know a lot of those channels make a lot of money off of this shit. And they are just as bad as the idiots at Lucasfilm who created them. No, they're not. And it, it, and you're right, they don't, they don't watch the show. They make comments that are stupid and ignorant and then think they're funny. And, and they make money on it. And they, they get subscribers and it's like, you know, I could have gone that way. I could have, but I don't want to. The reason why is because first off, I don't like half those people. I don't think they're funny. I don't think they're cool. I don't think they're intelligent. Um, I wouldn't want to sit around and have a drink with any of them because you can't talk about this stuff with them in the way that, you know, Tom Conkle today. That is the way you want to talk about a TV show like Boba Fett, a movie like Return of the Jedi. 
okay? And a lot of them are prequel haters. So this is just natural for them to hate something of Star Wars, okay? You know, it. what Kennedy did personally really hurt a lot of people. It hurt me. I'm not about to let that fucking bitch win, and she's not, all right? And I'm just gonna tell people, you gotta put your big boy pants on and understand, because Disney's in such a money pit right now, they have to change it, all right? They have to. It, it go, look, and then I gotta go. It goes to the ignorance of Disney's financial situation and they're too lazy to find out for themselves. It goes to, they're ignorant of the lore. Okay, Maze, the ignorance of the lore and the fact that you could see something that was in the EU in Knights of the Old Republic or whatever, and it goes right past them. And then you find out they never read the EU. They've never played Knights of the Old Republic. It's like, you know, I'm sure none of them realized that Kyle Ron stole his whole out outfit from Darth Revan. Okay? That's where it came from. That pissed me off right away. Okay, that's that pissed me off. Um, the fact that the titles of this show, The Gathering Storm, First volume in Winston Churchill's World War II volume, six volume set about the prelude to World War II. That's where that title came from. Okay? That's where that title came from. We have it. Okay? Strangers in a Strange Land. That's biblical. The Tribes of Tatooine. That is basically illustrative of oh, uh, a man called Horse. Streets of Mos Espa, Streets of Laredo, okay? You know, there, there, there are um, a lot of inspirations, even within the titles. None of those people would know that. It's hate for the love of the hate now. Okay, but for the sake of the worshippers of Gina Carano, offering to Gina shuts them all up. The narrative is now back in the fan, in the hand, fans, in the hands of the fans who love Star Wars. Okay, I gotta go because I gotta call my husband back. So I'll see you guys later. See you around the galaxy. And that was a great video by Doomcock, and I'm really, really pumped to see what happens next. See you guys later.